I'm Dr. Randy Neal, and in this video, we're going to talk about, you know, do medications help borderline personality disorder? And the simple answer is yes, they do, uh, but perhaps not for the reasons that you that you might uh, ex expect. You know, my experience with borderline personality comes from working in the inpatient and the outpatient uh, setting, and I'd say on the front end, it's it's key to make sure you have the diagnosis correct. And you know some of the differences that are that go between uh, bipolar and borderline personality is that typically, you know, someone who's got the borderline personality disorder, you know, they'll have these elevated moods um, that can look like bipolar, but typically they only last, you know, they might last minutes, they might last hours, as compared to someone who's bipolar, to where you know their elevated mood could last upwards of, of several days, upwards of a, of a week even. So there's really a big difference between the, the, the length of the emotional disturbance or the dysregulation per se. Another example is that someone who's, you know, borderline personality can typically be perhaps triggered uh, by when, when someone may, may, may have a comment. Uh, the comment may be, have been received differently than when it was actually delivered. And so there are certain triggers uh, that someone with borderline personality disorder can actually kind of get uh, dysregulated um, by that. Whereas someone who's got bipolar, they can just shift from, from very, having very lows to pretty much having very elevated mood without anyone um, you know, creating a disturbance uh, for them. They can just kind of shift in and out um, without any triggers. So in psychiatry, we have this thing called the DSM. Uh, it's kind of like the psychiatry bible of diagnoses, and in there, it lists there's nine criteria uh, for borderline personality disorder. And you know, the first one you'll see is it says imagined abandonment. So there's abandonment fears or unstable, intense personal relationships uh, that go from extremes. Uh, and then there's also the unstable self-image, and there's a, a lot of uh, impulsivity. Uh, perhaps for suicidal behaviors, uh, there's just a dysregulation in the mood, feelings of emptiness, intense anger, uh, you know, paranoia, uh, stress-related paranoid ideation, and severe dissociative symptoms, and you can read all those there. Now, so you can easily just kind of Google that and, and see what that DSM criteria is. And if you get five out of nine of those, and technically you, you you qualify, you know, for that diagnosis. But you know, when I work with someone who's got the borderline personality, I, I said, you know, let's not get bogged down into, into labels. Uh, let's not worry about, you know, if you if you're looking for that diagnosis and you really want to know what my opinion is on this to know what we're what exactly what we're working on is, you know, I'll I'll give this. Um, but let's not worry about the label so much. Let's, you know, you tell me what the symptoms that you're having, and then we can we can kind of move from there. And if you, if you wanna if you wanna give it a label, then fine. Um, but don't get so hung up on uh, as far as you know. I have borderline personality disorder. It's more about what that that diagnosis per se represents. So why get treatment for this for this condition? And really, there's three. I'd say there's three main things of why you would why you would seek treatment on this because typically. You know, and, and historical evidence says there's you know, more, when, more women than men, um, but typically, you know, women, they, uh, they, they don't marry uh, as often as their peers, and they don't uh, have children. And so, you know, that can be very disturbing, because uh, obviously there's a lot of people uh, may choose to have um, a partner and even have children. And so by having this condition, um, when there's this emotional dysregulation, that it could perhaps prevent that, you know, it, it makes it a, a lot harder to have stable relationships enough to, to the point where you want to uh, perhaps get married and even, even start a family. The second point is, is that there's like, a, there's like an identity disturbance or uh, basically, you know, there's, there's the elements of impulsivity, uh, of change, of always something new around the corner to where they're, they're, they're very impulsive with that. And then, you know, of course that can have an impact on your, your goals, your dreams, your you know your career, and you know obviously if you if you perhaps go from job to job or or have a, a new idea where you change your course in life quite often, you know that can lead to some instability, um, and and you don't make those gains uh, both personally and professionally uh, that you would typically like or see. And the third reason would be you know with this condition, you know historical evidence supports that there's a there's a higher risk for for self harm. Uh, whether it be cutting or even even suicide attempts, and you know even though there is some data to support that over time, you know that does that does reduce. Uh, and what they the evidence kind of shows that 
after about 15 years, you know, 75% of the people who were originally diagnosed with, with borderline personality disorder no longer meet criteria. And I think it was over 90% after over r roughly 27 years um, that no one met the criteria for that diagnosis. But, you know, when I look at that data, I'm like, well, you know, who wants to wait that long? You know, I don't want to wait 20 some years to, to, to get beyond this. And so I think it's important to, to seek treatment, uh, to seek, you know, to seek a qualified therapist and perhaps even a prescriber. And, and that's what this video is about to say, you know, do medications have their place um, within borderline personality disorder? And, and I'd say my answer is yes, they do. So before I get into the medications, I want to make sure that uh, it's, it's, I stress the point of making sure that you work with a therapist, you know, making sure that you work with somebody who's, who has experience with borderline personality disorder, who can kind of work you through the process and, and create a strategy, develop a plan moving forward of how you can, um, you know, make those adjustments in your life. Because when those triggers and those stressors do arise, you know, you, you got to have some plan in place of how you're going to adapt to those. Because of the way I see it, the, the borderline personality or, or any personality disorder per se, you know, really comes from adverse early childhood experiences. You know, the, the stuff, the, the stuff that people have to go through. You know, a lot of times I always say, you know, we don't choose our parents, we don't choose the people who, who raise us sometimes. Uh, but you know, as we adapt to that, some of those are somewhat un unhealthy adaptations. Uh, perhaps there's there's fears of people being there for us. And when we carry those over to adulthood, sometimes they don't translate very well when it comes to relationships and such. So working on those, those core issues uh, can best be done with a therapist who's, who's trained in that. Um, but when it comes to medications, uh, you know, the purpose of this video, uh, there are several medications uh, that, I, that I say have their place in this, in this condition. Because it's not so much that you're gonna treat those core issues, that's done through therapy. It's these outer surface symptoms you know whether it's the the anxiety that you feel when you're talking to the therapist perhaps it's the the, the deepening sadness uh, that comes about after discussing something in your home and you're thinking about everything and you know it's that impulsivity uh, that can that can occur and it's using medications in those areas to kind of keep those uh, more in check per se that can allow you to have a better success with the you know with the therapy process and I've said, you know, with the SSRIs, you know, those are the, um, the Lexapros, the Zolofts of the world, you know, a lot of times the purpose of those medications is to actually help the, help the body allow to make connections in the brain, the, the, you know, the new synapses per se. And as you're going through therapy, learning new strategies, uh, putting in the work, is that that medication is going to actually allow that to happen perhaps even uh, better than it, than it would if you weren't using the medication. Uh, there's a lot of data to support that when you go through the therapy process that you know therapy is good medications are are, are good but to but together they're much better and another medication that has some data to support uh, borderline personality is actually it's in the, the neuroleptic or antipsychotic category but it's a more mild one is uh, seroquel and you know seroquel is a medication uh, it hits a bunch of different receptors. Uh, not going to dig too deep into that, whether it's dopamine or histamine um, and such. But at the lower doses, um, it, it's, there was a study done, I believe it was in American Journal of Psychiatry in 2014, uh, that said uh, that Seroquel at the lower doses, so like 150 milligrams um, daily total, um, actually had some evidence that it, that it reduced the, uh, the impulsivity, um, even the, the, the aggression uh, perhaps that may be seen with borderline personality disorder. Any of those higher doses actually uh, didn't show much of a difference between uh, that and placebo, but again, at that lower dose of Seroquel, there was actually a difference when they did the study. It was a small study, but it was still, um, there was a significant difference between those with borderline personality disorder and their symptoms versus the people with borderline personality and the ones who took the, uh, the placebo as well. You know, sometimes I get a lot of questions about uh, benzodiazepines, and this is typically one of those conditions where I, where I personally don't see the, you know, it, it can cause too much as, a, as they say, a dissociation. And even though I know some people, you know, have benefited from those, um, typically it's not one that's that that I would see being prescribed for this because of that dissociation of, of effect. The other ones are, you know, it's a lot of times there's trauma history, and you can also address that with. 
uh, medications that may reduce the, as they say, the autonomic response when you wake up in the middle of the night with your heart racing, you're all sweaty, um, you know, when you have flashbacks, nightmares uh, from those old past experiences, uh, there's medications that can reduce those. But as you see, the, the, the pharmacology or the medications that we can use for this condition really treat the, the outer symptoms. But if we can kind of keep those in check, I think we can have a, perhaps a better experience as you're going through the therapy process. So, you know, in my opinion, there, the medications do have their place on this and there is some literature to support, um, you know, them being used in borderline personality disorder. So really, at the end of the day, um, you know, life is, is, is seeing our patterns. Some are healthy, some perhaps aren't so healthy. And if we, you know, we're, we're trying to make those decisions to improve ourselves, um, and, and that's essentially what it's about. It's, you know, it's all about just getting better, um, you know, kind of doing the best with what we got, with where we're at, and uh, just, to, just to keep moving forward.